Well, welcome to Pleasant Grove Community Church. We're glad that you're with us today. And if you're online, just a special welcome to you. Maybe you are new to Pleasant Grove Community Church. You can check us out on our website. There's lots of great stuff on there that helps you to get acquainted with who we are. But as we enter into this Advent season, it is wonderful to have you with us. Our theme as a church during this time is from heaven to earth. And we're really looking at how Jesus comes from heaven to be with us on earth and all that that entails. And probably there are four basic themes that we look at during this Advent season. Peace, hope, joy, and love. And we'll talk about each of those during the successive weeks. And today we'll focus our attention on peace. But it's so good to have each and every one of you with us today. You know, there are several things I just wanna highlight as we begin. And uh, we've had just a a wonderful opening to the season. Uh, For you in Advent, we have a small little gift, uh, a little booklet called the Christmas Code. And you can stop by the church, pick one up uh, outside the office door. And those are free for everyone that would like one of those. And it's a great little Advent reader, a daily devotional guide. So make sure you come and stop by and pick one of those up. If you come during office hours, they'll be right outside the front door there. And then an exciting thing for us is that uh, this this year we had over a hundred boxes donated for Operation Christmas Child. And that's exciting. There are more more boxes than that that will come in, but we have at least that many and that is a wonderful, wonderful gift. So thank you for joining us and being a part of that with us. And at this time, uh, George and uh, Barbara Ladder are going to come and they're going to uh, Do the Advent reading and light the Advent candle. Reading from Isaiah 35, 3 through 6, and verse 10. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. And those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we enter this season of Advent with hope and anticipation. Hope that you will continue to fulfill your word and promises in each and every one of us, and anticipation of the continuing miracle of new life that first came to earth with the birth of your Son. Though we are surrounded by chaos, you fill us with your indescribable peace. Though hope seems distant, repelled by fear and anxiety, you remain near and ever faithful. And though darkness and sin abound, your love and forgiveness stretch wider and pierce deeper. There is no pain that your hope can't heal, no brokenness that your life-giving love can't mend, no place that your gracious embrace can't reach us. We look to you, desire of nations, our Prince of Peace, and pray that the birth of Emmanuel continue its perfect work in each and every one of us. In the name of Christ, we ask this, amen. Sing joyful, 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 we adore you. Child of me. 
morning and I have the pleasure of leading us in our family prayer time today. First of all, just a quick reminder that our missionary this month is the North American Baptist Conference, the NAB. Now the NAB provides uh, specialized training and resources to equip pastors and church leaders. They also partnered with us 20 some years ago to launch uh, Pleasant Grove Community Church as well as more recently to launch our new communities ministry with Pastor Joe Caples. So we are very glad to be able to support the NEB and we'll be praying for them today. Now let's bow our heads and just quiet our hearts before the Lord and then I will lead us in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are able to be in your presence today this first Sunday of Advent, Father, where we think about peace. We light the peace candle, and we remember that peace is something that you desire for us. Help us to embrace peace, Father. And as we pray together, we are asking, Lord, for peace for those in the hospital or at home recovering from illness and surgery. We do have a number of people in our midst that 
are hospitalized or at home, Father, and we just thank you for giving them the peace of your love. Father, we also pray for peace during this unusual time when family traditions have had to be set aside. Many of us were unable to spend time at Thanksgiving with our families, and this may also be true for the upcoming Christmas holiday. And Father, I just pray that you'll give us peace about that and just trust you. I pray, Father, too, that you will give us peace ongoing in our hearts and minds. While things are chaotic around us at times, Father, we are just so lucky to have you as our Lord and Savior and to be able to embrace that peace that you provide to us if only we say yes. We pray for peace as well, Father, in our country and throughout the world. Here in the United States, as we transition our government and throughout the world, Father, as other countries battle the COVID-19 disease. Father, help us all to focus on you during this Christmas season and not keep the good news to ourselves, but share your love with others in your precious name. And Father, now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Now this is normally the time of the service when we take our offerings. Uh, now that we can't meet together though, it's a little more challenging, but you have a couple of options and we sincerely appreciate your ongoing giving. Uh, there should be up on the screen the church address because that's one way you can continue to give by sending your offerings into the church office. We do check our mail here daily. The other option is to go online through our website at www.pgcc.church and sign up for online giving. Just follow the prompts. And if you need any help, call the office and we're more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much for your giving and God bless.
Well, thank you, Jillian, for sharing that gift of music with us. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. A group of first graders decided to create their own Christmas play. And uh, so when it came time for the show, the parents all gathered, and, and they had all the major characters right there on the stage. There was Joseph. There were the shepherds. There were the wise men. But, but where was Mary? Mary, Mary was missing. And then, then you began to hear a moaning from behind a couple bales of hay. And a little boy walks out dressed like a doctor with a little black bag. And he and Joseph walk behind the bales of hay. And then the doctor comes back out and announces, It's a God. That's what it's all about. That's what the Advent season is all about focusing on this incredible announcement that it's a God, this, this coming from heaven to earth and everything it means for our lives and for this world. And we need help focusing because the Christmas season can be so busy we can get distracted. And, well, this year there's a few more distractions than usual. And uh, before we know it, it's Christmas Day and we're exhausted and we never had the opportunity to stop and reflect on the re incredible fact that God came from heaven to earth. That's the name of our series, Heaven to Earth earth. It's an incredible announcement, and we need to take time to focus on what it means for our lives and for our world. So that's why we are giving you the free Advent devotional book, so you can spend time every day focusing in on this incredible gift. And that's why we are sending out on Saturdays our new Stations of the Advent. 
event for you to use. That's why we're doing this message series, Heaven on Earth, so that we can have the opportunity to focus on the meaning of God coming from heaven to earth. Well, let me ask you, uh, did you have a brother or a sister, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law who gave your kids Christmas gifts that made you want to strangle them? One little girl was thanking her uncle for his Christmas gift of a drum set. Yeah, that's right, a drum set. Uncle Jack, thank you so much for the drum set. It's the best gift I've ever gotten. Uncle Jack was thrilled by this and said, oh, that's great, Susie. So did you learn how to play it? No, I don't play it. It's a great gift because mommy and daddy give me five bucks a week not to play it. And all of you are probably thinking it was worth every single penny just for the peace and quiet. How many of us can use a little more peace in our lives, right? right? It seems like everyone is angry these days. I mean really angry. Democrats are angry at the fascist Republicans. Republicans are angry at the socialist Democrats, and they're being really loud about it. There's no give and take. There's no giving the benefit of the doubt. There's no stopping to listen and trying to understand. There's no peace. And that's just some of the noise outside of our lives. For many of us, we're struggling to experience peace inside of our lives. Political tensions have us worried. COVID has us scared. Isolation has us depressed. We need some peace. You know, the Bible tells us why there is no peace in our lives or in our world. James chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, answers and then, I mean, asks and then answers this question. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. The big idea today is that we don't have peace because we value ourselves over others. And we'll never have peace in the world until we value others more than ourselves. It's because we're not able or willing to pay that price that we don't have peace in our lives. But, but all that changed when Jesus came from heaven to earth. About 700 years before Jesus' birth, um, the prophet Isaiah, directed by God, announced, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and here, what I want to focus on, Prince of Peace. 700 years later, when Jesus was born, the angels picked up on that theme when they announced to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Jesus came from heaven to earth to bring us peace, to give us peace, and he did it by valuing us over himself. We can see this just in in him being a baby lying in the manger. That baby is the son of God. That baby is the mighty one. That baby knows the glory of heaven. That baby has heard the soaring angel choir. That baby knows the power of creating mountains and oceans and planets and stars. That baby scattered galaxies across the universe like sand on the beach. And yet there he is, lying in a manger, having left all of that behind to be with us, 
to be with us, to bring us peace because he values us more than he valued the glory of heaven. Imagine the conversation that would have taken place between God the Father and God the Son before Jesus came to earth. Son, people on earth are suffering and they're dying because they're under the power of Satan. They're focused on themselves. They fight with each other. They live in fear. Son, I want you to go down there to make things right, to heal and restore them. And it won't be easy. In order to be their savior, you must be born as a human, as a fragile, defenseless baby who is totally reliant on human parents for your survival. You'll be born in a cave filled with the stench of animals. You'll be born into a poor family. And here's what's going to happen. Your best friends are going to betray you. In the hour of your greatest need, they're going to abandon you. Your people, our people, are going to mock you. The government is going to try to kill you from day one. You're going to be spit upon, beat, whipped, and then nailed to a cross. And I'm asking you, I'm asking you to do all of this so that you can save them from themselves. So will you do it? Will you leave all this glory for that? And Jesus replies, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus values us over himself and became our Prince of Peace. And as a result, we can experience three different kinds of peace. The first is peace with God. This is the most important one. This is where it all starts. This is the foundation, the bedrock. If we do not have peace with God, we will not have peace at all. We need to have peace with God. And if you didn't know, there's been a war between us and God. Romans chapter 1 graphically describes this. The Message Bible paraphrases it this way. People knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat him like God, Refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose. Rampant evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth, and they keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives. They know perfectly well they're spitting in God's face. We're at war with God, and that's at the bottom of all the strife we experience in the world. But that, that all changed when Jesus came from heaven to earth. Listen to what Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 to 22 says. You used to be far from God. Your thoughts made you his enemies, and you did evil things. But, oh, but his son became a human and died. So God made peace with you, and now he lets you stand in his presence as people who are holy and faultless and innocent. Amen. There had been no peace with God. We had been far from God, but Jesus turns all of that around. He valued us more than he valued himself, and he paid the punishment for our sins so that we can have peace with God. And as a result of that peace with God, now we can have a second kind of peace. This is the peace we can experience, the peace of God. The peace of God. This is the peace that we're wanting inside of us. In John 14, 27, Jesus says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be afraid or troubled. Peace of mind and heart. That's what we all want. And when Jesus lives in us, He brings his peace to us. 
Let me say that again. When Jesus lives in us, when Jesus lives in you, he brings his peace to you. It's the peace Daniel experienced in the lion's den. It's the peace Paul experienced that allowed him to sing when he was in prison. It's the peace Jesus experienced as he slept in a boat during a vicious storm. It's the peace David knew when he wrote, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Did you catch that? For you are with me with me. It's when we know God is with us that we have peace. Let me kind of paint a picture for you so you can really grasp this. You've probably seen little children kind of grab onto their parent's leg and hold on for dear life whenever someone they didn't know comes around, right? Have you seen that? Why do they do that? It's because when they're close to their parent, holding on to their parent, they feel secure. They feel peace. Or maybe there was a time when you're a child and uh, you were scared or, or maybe even just sad. And so you climbed up on your parents' lap and they held you tight and it made you feel safe and secure. Or when you were learning to, to ride a bike and your dad was there running alongside of you and because he was there right next to you, it gave you enough security to take the risk. That's the picture of the peace David had to write about when he said, I fear no evil for you are with me. Because I know you're with me, I experience peace. When we're conscious of God's presence, when we feel close to God, when we have the strong sense of a relationship with God, we feel the peace of God. And when we have the peace of God, we're no longer afraid of him. Instead, we want to go to him and climb up on his lap and and feel secure, feel that, that safety and that peace. So what we need to do if we want to experience Jesus' peace inside of us is we need to nurture that relationship with him so that we know that he is with us. As we take steps to become more aware of God's presence, we experience more peace. So what steps can we take to nurture this relationship? Well, participating in church, worshiping, praying, absorbing the message. That's all ways in which we can experience peace, even even when it's on video. Ways we can nurture that relationship. A daily time with God in prayer and Bible study keeps our daily awareness of God's presence. Using the spiritual formation exercises we make available on our church website is another way that will draw you closer to Jesus. These are just a few of the basic steps you can take that will nurture your relationship with God. And the more you nurture that relationship, the more you have a sense of peace. And as a result, as this peace inside of you grows, then you're able to start giving away that peace. Then you're able to start becoming a peacemaker and you can pass the peace on to others. Hebrews 12, 14 says, make every effort to live in peace with a few people. No, not some effort, every effort. Not some people, everyone. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Jesus said this to his disciples, a new command I give you, a command, not a suggestion. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Because we are loved by God, we can love others. We can pass on the peace. We pass on the peace by showing compassion to others, the same compassion God has shown to us. We pass on the peace whenever we are generous and kind towards others, just as God has been generous and kind to us. We pass on the peace when we are calm in the storm, being a calming presence when everyone around us is blowing and blustering. We pass on the peace when we forgive others, 
just as Jesus has forgiven us. And we pass on the peace when we see others the way God sees them, as people created in the image of God, and then we treat them that way. The Prince of Peace came from heaven to earth so that we can have peace. First, peace with God. It all starts there. And then we can experience the peace of God as Jesus comes inside of us. And then we are able to pass on that peace to others, bring peace to everyone around us. But to have this peace, you have to be willing to pay the price. You have to be willing to pay the price of time to nurture that relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to be willing to pay the price of of putting others ahead of yourself, valuing others more than yourself. It's the price of compassion, the price of generosity, the price of forgiveness, not just to friends, but to strangers, not just to Christians, but to everyone. You know, one of my favorite children's Christmas play stories is about a seventh grader named William. And William was uh, big for his age, a little slow mentally, but a really good kid and well liked. And he wanted to be a shepherd in the Christmas play. But his teacher instead made him the innkeeper because he looked rough and imposing. So when it came time for the play, Mary and Joseph came walking to the door and knocked on the the door, and and William played his part brilliantly, said his lines, there is no place for you to stay. There's no room in the inn. And Joseph says, but my wife is tired and weary, and she's expecting a baby. Isn't there just a small room somewhere where we could rest? And once again, William said, you'll have to find a place somewhere else. There's no room in the inn. Once more, Joseph pleaded for some place for them to stay the night. And then there was a long pause. It seemed like William had forgotten this next line, and you could hear someone whispering from off stage, No, be gone, be gone. So William, now a little more quietly, kind of hesitantly, says, No, be gone. And so Mary and Joseph, looking sad, started to turn away. And and suddenly, William just blurts out, No, wait, wait. You can have my room, and I'll sleep in the shed. That's what it's all about. Paying the price. Putting others ahead of ourselves. To have the peace of God, you need to put others ahead ahead of yourself. To know peace, you need to put others ahead of yourself. And it all starts with Jesus. He put us ahead of himself. And before you can experience the peace of God, you need to have that peace with God. And that means you need to put Jesus first. You need to surrender control of your life. You can have my life. That means following Jesus all of the time, not just some of the time. That means being obedient in everything and not just some things. That's the price you must be willing to pay. It's worth it to know the peace of God, to have peace with God. It's a price worth paying. In John 1, 10 to 12, there's a bit of sadness and hope as well. It says Jesus was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. That's the sadness. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's the hope. We need to have peace with God. And we can have that peace because of Jesus when we believe in him. So do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God who surrendered the glory of heaven to come to earth and die on the cross to pay for your sins and make peace between you and him? Are you ready to pay the price and surrender your life to Jesus and allow him to enter your life, bringing with him salvation, new life, and peace? 
And for those of you who have already surrendered your life, what steps are you taking to nurture that relationship so that you can experience his peace inside of you? If you're not taking steps, you're cheating yourself of the peace you can know. I want to give you an opportunity right now to have peace with God, to make peace with God. It says that when we believe in his name, we become children of God. And if today you're ready to pay that price, you're ready to surrender, you're ready to believe and say, God, I need you and I need your salvation, I need your forgiveness, you can express that in a prayer that I'm going to lead you in right now. If you're ready to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, pray along with me something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I need to make peace with you. I am a sinner. My relationship with you is broken. But I repent of those sins. I turn to you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe you came from heaven to earth that you died on the cross to forgive my sins, that you rose again to give me life and peace. So I commit all of my life for the rest of my life to following you. And I thank you that at this moment you've received me as your child. At this moment I am forgiven and have peace with you. At this moment, Jesus has entered my life. I thank you and is bringing your peace into me. And I pray that you'll help me follow your ways. I pray that you'll help me nurture that relationship. I pray that I experience your peace. And for all of you who have already made that commitment, I ask you to pray as well. I will pray for you. Dear Lord Jesus, may we all continue to seek you, to focus on you during this Advent season, to nurture our relationship with you so that in the busyness of this season, we are calm. In the, the worries and the fears and the noise around us, we know peace, for you are with us. May we claim that each and every day. I pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you're someone who just prayed the prayer to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to become a Christian, to surrender your life to him, please, I would like to ask you to let us know. We want to nurture that relationship, help you get started. We will send you our favorite booklet called Why Jesus? On, on what it means to be a Christian, and, and we'll stay in contact with you. Please let us know. And now, let's hear the benediction. It's Advent season. It's, it's the season of God coming to be with us, and it brings us peace. So embrace that. Focus on that. And as, as God has spoken to you today, as, as you experience his peace. Go out and pass that peace on to others. Be generous. Be kind. Be calm. Be forgiving. Be loving. Be a blessing. Thank you for being with us today.